Hello, thank you for joining me. My name is Lamin Jalo. I'm the microbiology application scientist for biomonitoring at Milipo Sigma here in Burlington. Today I will demonstrate sterility testing using the Sterita Symbiopong. I have here a couple of canisters. I'm using the blue base. I have my blue base canister that you need for sterility test. I also have my diluent that I will use to rinse it. This diluent could be any of the recommended diluents as long as it is sterile, USP recommended diluents. I have my product here. It is assumed that my product is poured in one bottle. And I obviously can do it without our media. We have our TSB media and FTM media. To start, I have my canister. I peel my canister, gently remove it from the holder and insert it in the canister holder here. Okay, my pump is on. I'm gonna test using the standard mode. As we all know, it does have the test method mode where you transfer test methods in there and it will guide you through the whole test. I'm using standard, which is manual. So it is recommended that always the canister that is on the right side, the tubing goes first inside. Push it all the way in, make sure so you can move it freely inside. Leave enough room here because when the pump closes, it takes, it chews some of the tubing. It might not leave you enough here. So once that is done, I'll close my pump. So with the canister set comes with my accessories. You have my red plug. I do have my yellow plug as well. So I'll leave them here nice and neat. It is recommended when you do sterility testing to pre-wet the filter. When you pre-wet the filter, the membrane, what it does is it occupies these pores. That way it will not allow the product to bind strongly with the membrane. This makes it easier during rinsing to remove all the properties that may hinder um, microbial growth. Okay? I have my second needle here that will help aerate the bottle. I have my needle. I will pierce my septum. Make sure it's good. For speeding, when you pre-wet, it is recommended mostly to do 50 D. Yes, because it shouldn't be too fast. When it's slow, it allows the diluent enough time to burn the membrane. I'll turn my pump on. When you turn it on, leave your bottle upright on the bench. Give this time for the sensors to activate. Then you can invert your bottle and place it inside the hang it in the bottle, bottle holder. We'll see it will pre-wet our membrane. I'm gonna pre-wet with approximately about 50. Always before you turn the pump off, place your bottle upright again. Then I turn this off because if you leave it inverted, you will still have fluid in the tubes here. So that is done. I need my red plugs to filter these. Red plugs in, I turn the pump on to make sure I filter these. While that is going on, I will prepare my product for filtration. Depending on what type of sample you're doing, if it is very, if it is an antibiotic, or a product that has properties that will hinder growth, what you can also do is, you could also add another 50 ml, I will not, then you add your product. Pre-wetting should be more than enough for most products. I've already pre-wetted, I will transfer my needles to my product. Then I will turn my pump, increase the speed to about 60, because when you do the product, you wanna, you want to filter your product with a higher speed. This will not give the product enough time to bind with the membrane. It will bind, but not as much because we don't want it. We don't want it 
interacting with the membrane too long. While it's here, I can add my red plugs. Assuming this is enough, in the interest of time, that would be the only product I would filter. Let this filter, and I will prepare my rinse fluid again to rinse it. When you filter this, after you filter the product, you want to keep the membrane moist because if you leave it dry, it becomes a little harder for you to rinse off the product. So I will transfer my needles again to my diluent. I will reduce the speed again to about 50 and I will turn this on depending on how many rinses your method requires. You will do this and repeat it as many as the record, as the method dictates. I'm only demonstrating one here. Nice and slow, nothing to rush. So if you have three times 100 ml, you will do this three times. If it is five times, you will do this five times. So since I don't have 200, I will make sure I will allow this to go as close to 100. Then I will place my bottle upright again, and I will stop the pump. This, depending on how much volume of product you have in there, you should gently swirl your canister allow all the drip goes back inside the canister holder and use this as well you want to swirl it to just make sure nice and slow make sure you get all the products on the side without wetting your filter on top here that is done i need my red plugs place my red plugs turn the pump on again to filter While this is prepared, filtering, obviously prepare your media. Before you start, always it is assumed that all this process should be accepted. Before you start, if you're in an isolator, of course you will run your isolator. Before you start, you will wipe your stuff with IPA, make sure everything is ready. Um, so you can test aseptically. So this is almost done. Since the media is coming, once you're done, you mix all the diluent is filtered. I'll turn my pump off. I'll remove my red plugs. Next would be my yellow plugs. Don't forget your yellow plugs. If you don't attach your yellow plugs, you will lose some media. You could lose some media, and that could render your test invalid. Okay, I place my yellow plugs in there now I will transfer my needle. I like to do my TSB first. I will transfer the needle inside the TSB. I will transfer this inside the TSB. Okay. The speed is at 50, which is good for TSB. If this were method development or method suitability, what you would do is you will do your last rinse. Your last rinse, obviously, you will spike it with your microorganism of interest then you rinse it before you add your media in that case also it would have been two tsb or two ftm because the organisms can go in one media at a time if the organism be subtilis it would be two tsb one for positive control one for the sample or positive control in duplicate or sample in duplicate but here we are demonstrating regular uh, regular sterility testing so i would use the two media in the lab this is how it would do after your sterility test rinse then you'll do your media one at a time don't forget clamp one side i like to put my ftm with red i will clamp it i will leave the other side open and i will turn my pump on i will allow the sensors to engage and i will invert my media media bar nice and slow let it
Make sure my scissors are ready, all wiped, ready to go. Since I'm filtering the whole content, there is no need for me to place the bottle upright. I can just turn the pump off, there is no liquid. If there was liquid still here, it's always recommended to place your bottle upright before. So now I will transfer to my FTM. Inside my needle, avoiding to touch the needle, inside it. Since we're doing FTM, don't forget, you unclamp the side and you clamp the other side. Speed needs to be reduced to approximately about 30 is recommended. It needs to be slower because the speed, the, the speed you are filtering, it does cause air bubbles and that will aerate, it will oxygenate the FTM, which we want to avoid. If the FTM is oxygenated, you will see after incubation, the pink layer on top expands. And you don't want to pass half of that at the end of incubation. So reducing the speed helps reduce oxygenation. I'll turn my pump on, slow speed, give it sensors time to engage. Then I will invert my media bottle and let it transfer nice and slow inside the other canister. We don't need this again, the red plugs. You can always put that away and allow this to go. Like I was saying, if it were method suitability while this is filtering, I would be doing two TSB because if you're using organisms for method suitability, you wouldn't want to put one organism on one side, the other organism on one side. There could be contamination in between. In that case, I prefer running them in duplicate. Or if you're running it in singles, I would put my sample, I will clamp one side, I will filter half the samples on one side, once I'm done, I'll put my media in there. The other side, I will do my diluent inoculated with the organism to serve only as my positive control for comparison. Either way, you're good. Some people prefer to do positive control and sample. Some prefer, some prefer to do in duplicate. It's totally up to you. They are both acceptable. Once all my media has been transferred, I will stop the pump, I will stretch this a little bit, I will push, I clamp a little further away, clamp it, move this a little further away, clamp it. Always open the pump to release the pressure. If you don't open the pump, once you cut here, you could spread the product media on your face leave enough to grab this so you can push it in cut the other side grab the end push it in it always also i like to highlight this part when you clamp always try to clamp on the filter end because if you clamp on this other end, if you leave the clamp on this end here, you see these liquids around here? In case sometimes during incubation, if this pulls out for whatever reason, something gets introduced here, there's a chance even when the clamp is there due to gravity, it can drop in and render your test invalid or false positive. So it's always better when you clamp, you clamp on this side, preferably without any liquid. This protects everything that is in here, even when this thing opens up, you won't worry about anything passing through there with gravity. So thank you very much. This is ready for incubation.